So this is Alec, he's one of the inventors of the liquid piston rotary engine. So this is our museum, it kind of shows the evolution of how the technology uh, evolved over time. There's a bunch of different engines here, and what is the same between all of them is this new thermodynamic cycle, the high efficiency hybrid cycle. So this really represents the learning of the company over many years. Um, we started in 2003, and this was the idea back then. It was a split cycle engine. So we had a small compressor, little constant volume combustors, and a larger expander. So kind of like two rotary engines here and, and, a, and a combustor in between them. So this was the first uh, concept that we kind of put into a, a, a mock-up like that. Uh, and then the idea really evolved from there, right? So this was kind of a plastic prototype. This is, this is what we first built. This is a split cycle version of the engine where we had a compressor, combustor, and then expander. And you can see that the expander is larger than the compressor. Here you've got this, this rotor inside. So we just compress into the top there. You see that? Um, from there, in 2006, we were awarded a, a army contract and we built our first actual hardware. So that was a compressor. And once that was working, uh, we, we started to raise some venture capital funding. So the VCs came in, and that, that's really kind of when the company really actually started. It was around 2007. Um, so we, we started here with, the, with a, a split cycle. This is a compressor, and this was the first version that we had that actually had seals in it. And this is when we started to experience the, the, the hardships of sealing an engine. Our first version of, a, of the compressor here, it didn't have any seals. It worked great, it compressed the air to very high compression ratios, but in a real engine, you have to seal the gas, right? The engine is nothing if you're not sealing it. We have to leave room for things to thermally expand as things get hot inside the engine. You know, everything needs to, needs to have a little bit of room to, to grow and expand and warp. And because of that, you have to put seals in. And once you put the seals in, it actually creates pathways for blow-by. And, and that, that's a, a big thing that you have to solve to, to make a new kind of rotary engine. We call this the M1. So just like that plastic model, this was our first engine that actually uh, worked on that principle. This is the compression gate here, the expansion gate. And it's all about dividing the compression, combustion, and, and expansion, and optimizing each of those individually. So that was our first actual running engine that burned something. We call this the N1. It was a evolution of, of this guy, and it, it only had one gate on the inside that kind of flipped back and forth. Um, but we never actually ran that one. We went away from the split cycle engine because it's just too many losses going from different parts of the engine. And this was our first time just kind of collapsing everything down. So um, what would happen is this, this rotor here would compress against a compression gate. It would combust in here, and then it would expand against the expander gate. And so we, we were able to capture the features of our cycle, but do it all in kind of one layer. And that, that was really the birth of our, of our engines here. We call that the M engine, creatively named for the, for, for the gates. It looked like the McDonald gates. Uh, and then it evolved over here to the M2. And that's, that's these two engines here. That one actually has a transparent cover on it. This was the, the more evolved version of the engine. Uh, we ran that engine on gasoline and on diesel. Um, it never really made a whole lot of power because what you see here is a large number of seals. And again, it's, it's really about how can you seal the engine? How can you stop that air from escaping inside, right? If you can't seal the engine, then you, you really don't have an engine. Every engine that we built got a little bit bigger and bigger, and it, it all comes down to that sealing problem. When you get to a bigger engine, the sealing doesn't quite matter as much. Um, so we, we built, at this point, we built a very large version of the X engine and also a large version of the M engine. And they, we just kind of tested them back to back, right, to see which one was better. The first time we spun this engine, we knew that it was the winner that it, it would outperform the, the, the prior M engines because it doesn't have all these seals in it. It's got similarities, just one rotor, just a, a few seals, and in, in that sense, it's, it's very similar to the, to, the, uh, to the Weinkel. After the X1 here, we built the X Mini. It's a little engine, about 79cc in displacement uh, over, over the three chambers. Uh, so it's the same architecture as you find in our bigger X1 engine here, but just everything's reduced in size. We actually went here uh, starting with the lawn and garden industry as a, uh, as a market. So we were working with a lawn and garden company. Um, and the interesting thing here is that when we reduced the size, nothing worked anymore, right? Everything was working well on the big engine. When we got down to the really small scale, 
again, the seals. Uh, it, the, the small size really highlights the importance of these seals. So we, we spent about a year solving that problem. We were working with DARPA, um, the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, and we, we solved that problem. And that, that was huge for us to advance the engine from there. So this is a, a drone that we used to test the engine in. And uh, inside here we had a, a, our engine along with an electric motor. This is uh, our first time actually taking the engine outside of, uh, outside of the ground setting and putting it in the air. So it's a, it's a 55 pound bird, uh, works on heavy fuel for the military and it's a, it's a hybrid electric, so we can actually switch between working on the engine with, with fuel power and also uh, switching to electric power. So all of this research, development, pain, and agony all kind of led up to the final version, which is this.